<laughs> so the way I think oh, I'm... Let me get Cindy. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I have to do the Cindy thing first before... Hi, I'm good. How are you? You're, you're on speaker. Okay. All right. I'm going to put you here near me, but if I can move you by Holly if I need to. Can you hear me, Cindy? Yes, I can. Okay. So um, we need to note that you're participating electronically in accordance with the right to know law. I need you to state for the record where you are why your attendance in person was not reasonably practical, if anyone is with you, and whether or not you're able to hear the proceedings. I can hear the proceeding. I am in New Hampshire. I am not at the meeting due to COVID restrictions, and I am alone. Great. Thank you. Um, and then for those present who are, we are going to have to take all calls by roll call. Okay? Got it? Okay. All votes, votes. sorry. Calls. Whatever. Calls. We got you. Whatever. <laughs> votes by roll call. Yeah. All right. So I'd like to put on the floor. I think the way we'll do this, I think we're going to have some discussion about the class rank policy. And in the outline, um, she has, a, has me make the motion with an amendment. But I'd like to just kind of put the, put the policy on the floor. Then we'll make amendments as we go. And then... Um, vote on it as third and adopt. So I'm going to make the motion to accept as third reading um, policy IKC class rank. As we'll talk pre about as, it. As presented. As presented. Then we'll talk about it, amend it, possibly change it, and then possibly adopt it. I'm just, we're just going to do a third reading here, and then we'll do another motion. The reason she's using her wording is this is an amendment. This is an amended version. Okay, so motion to amend um, and accept as third reading policy IKC class rank. We want to accept and adopt. I was going to do the third reading. Okay. Okay. No, right. I just didn't know. I didn't know what. what I, I have, have a feeling that. we may amend the further amendment. Yeah. So I didn't okay. want to make this motion Got about it. adopting so, it. I wanted so to be moved. a third reading. Second. Okay. And then Beth, is that a second? Mm -hmm. So so moved by Tom, seconded by Beth. So since this has been sort of um, under my purview in the policy committee, I'll bring forth the policy, which is in the packet. What we changed, we, we went back to policy. We brought forth the concerns about the, um, the various concerns that have been brought up at the, in this meeting and to us via the email and um, decided to change the uh, beginning time of the class rank change um, to the class of 2022. So for the public, if anyone's paying attention, we have not been calculating or presenting rank to our students for many years, but in the last um, seven or eight years, we have announced the top 10 students at graduation. This policy removes that practice and instead puts in place um, that we will not be reporting class rank, but we will have an academic achievement um, that will be recognized and outlined in the Hollis Brookline Program of Studies, which unfortunately we just approved that without it, so we'll have to talk about that. Um, but the ex we have had for the last five years an exception to this policy, to that pr practice, and that is that we um, have reported for the sole purpose of the service academy application process um, a person's rank. Um, for your information, we did, as a policy committee, and we reported this last month, we did reach out to the service academies and found out that approximately 50% of the service academies reported to us that they require rank, and the other 50% said that you can apply without rank. So um, we know that other districts in the area certainly get kids into the service academies and they don't rank. However, we do not know what they do behind the scenes or how they, um, how they assist their students. We don't know that. Um, we uh, did, I did talk to the assistant principal in, who is in charge of student service and guidance today. And she said that when they do report the rank to service academies, the student themselves does not receive that number. So the number is reported confidentially to the service academy. Um, so we didn't have that particular information, but that was Rick pretty much thought that's the way it was. 
So as a policy committee, we decided to put it forth continuing with the exception because this is my view. I'm, I don't want to speak to the whole policy committee, but um, the goal for the Instructional Practices Steering Committee and the subcommittee that worked on class rank on this policy or on the conversation about announcing top 10, the goal was to get rid of that practice, that the culture of our school is impacted negatively by the practice of continuing to announce top 10. It puts undue amount of pressure on the students in the top 10 or the students in the top 20, let's say, it creates an environment of stress, struggle, um, maybe a little bit of hyper-competitiveness, and it's just not in keeping with true academic integrity at times. So that was the goal, but we also felt like our service, those students who are applying to service academies are not just applying to college, but they're applying to serve their country, and we wanted to give them what they need, to what we think they could need to do that. And personally, I think if we're trying to eliminate or take away some of the anxiety on our kids, I think if I were a student who was considering a service academy, I might be very anxious if I didn't know that I could put that rank down or have someone put that rank down for me. So that's sort of my take, a little bit of a spin on it from the policy committee and me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I had to weigh in as Holly too. So that's why it's presented as it is, and the reason we stuck with the class of 22 is because the students kind of reported back to us that that was what they wanted, and that was the original intention of the Instructional Practices Committee was to start it with this, with the juniors, the class of 2022. So we decided to make that change, and because, as Tom pointed out last month, it's, a, it's the right thing to do for our students, and our students will benefit from this, and we want it to be what's best for our kids. So may as well start it as soon as possible, but this year was not possible in our minds. So. There's one thing I, I almost, I'm almost certain we talked about before is the his or her and there, but. Did I not make that change? We didn't, but that's okay. I know we okay, talked well, about it. Well, that I can it, do so here. I, I mean, I can do that. It. So where is it? Oh, it's the bottom well, of the last second. Oh, sentence. sorry. I'll change that to there. Sorry. That's okay. That was just a simple typo mistake. Yes, Tom. I would like to propose uh, uh, an amendment to the to the motion. Um, I would. <clears throat> I'm going to just say what it is, and if it gets seconded, then I'll talk about the whys and wherefores. Okay. So but you're I would a motion to amend it with the yeah, following language. I would like to eliminate the second paragraph and replace it with the following. <clears throat> the grade point average ranges for the upper 10% and upper 25% will be published in the Hollis Brookline High School school profile. Data for the graduating class in the current school year taken from the end of the most recently completed semester will be used. I can second it so I can so you can talk about it. I mean I'm not I'm not I have a lot of questions, so second. Okay, so that's the so we have an amendment on the floor that Tom has read to us. Um, I can pass it around in writing if anyone wants to see it in writing. Yeah, I would like to see it. I can email it to you too, but I've got it in writing there. Can um, you email it to me? Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. How do you see that looking on the program study set? The profile profile you mean. What's your question? How do you see that looking? Um, you see the graph for GPA? Mm -hmm. Two text lines above it is where it would, what I would envision it being. To a line that says upper 25% GPA, upper 10% GPA range, I don't know, 4.0 to 4.9. Uh, upper 10%, 4.37 to 4.9. Okay. But when, when we were asked to make this <laughs> exception that now exists, what was presented to the board was a requirement that a candidate had to um, verify that they were in the upper certain percentage of their class, not specifically 
their their GPA. Uh, excuse me, um, not yeah, not specifically their class rank. Um, the 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 condition of not reporting class rank drove that exception. It was not related to the top ten. They were somewhat independent that were captured in the same policy. I believe that the proposed amendment <coughs> will allow a student to self-report their GPA. It's also re um, potentially on the transcripts, I don't know, but certainly to self-report their GPA because that information is available. And for any um, requiring school to make a determination uh, of some relatively relevant characterization, um, I picked top 10 percent and top 25 percent because top 10 percent and upper quarter are commonly reported and used indexes, mm -hmm. but there's nothing sacred about those specific ones. The idea being that the profile can take aggregated information and publish it as it intends to now, and then the self-reported GPA in combination can answer the questions that the majority of institutions have and from my understanding it, it would also fulfill the requirements that have been put forth by the service academies in the past. Kate, did you have a question? No, I, I guess I just, I'm, you kind of just came to it in your last statement. My wonder was how, how does what you're replacing that with actually solve and sort of serve the purpose of giving the rank to the service academies, which is what we sort of had, you know, we're talking about doing. And I don't necessarily agree that just providing a range in GPAs is, is going to really serve its purpose. They were, well, the way it was presented to us was that the student needs to be in a certain percentage of their class. That, it was just a flat thing and says, we have to be able to, to make this statement. So I believe that the question that was asked by Rick's team to the service academies was, do you need us to pr produce rank, class rank? Mm -hmm. So um, I'd have to go back to the policy committee and clarify that with Rick, because I'm not 100% sure if that was the way the question was asked and answered. Um, we assumed it was based on the rank number. My so understanding based on knowledge of students who've applied to service academies is that it is an actual rank number. Right, and that's that's where, so this is one of the reasons why I didn't want to put this on as an adoption because the other thing is, is unlike, I mean, we our precedent is to make sure that when we vote on policy that the public has seen it. If we want to amend the policy with this amendment, that's fine, but I don't think we can adopt it. I think we would have to amend it, put it forward, bring it back to policy committee, and bring it back one more month. I don't think it's right to make a change. I mean, if we eliminate it or, um, you know, we've been trying to make sure that we're really transparent with this process. Uh, uh, just, just a comment. One of the reasons that I am going to this work is I and I believe other board members do not support it with that paragraph in it. So gotcha. I, I viewed this as a compromise, yeah. but I'm comfortable if we just plain eliminate that paragraph. But I thought this would be I, better than that. Yeah, I, I agree. I don't like the second paragraph, and I've made that known. I, I really don't want to vote for it with that in there, and I do like the idea of a compromise. And I, I think it does serve the purpose, but I guess it, that's time would tell on that. But it's, it's not... Um, like we've said, our, our, the people that are getting into service academies are not, you know, the number one student in our graduating class. That's it's more, it, it's just one of many tools that they look at, and it's, you know, I, I actually like the compromise a lot. Too. I actually see the exception for class rank as a compromise. <laughs> so, um, you know, keeping something in there for our service academy, but getting rid of announcing top ten is to me already sort of there, but. I, I'm, I, go ahead, does anyone else? Well, I just, again, I just, I appreciate what you did come, and I, I see certainly the benefit of that, and I do, I do see it as a compromise. I do get concerned that we asked about rank and if it's rank, 
And the, like we said before, I mean, the whole point of this is to not hurt kids. But now we're like, well, we don't think we're going to hurt them. We don't know what these other districts are doing. They say they don't rank, but they don't say that if they're asked specifically, they give it. We are a district that takes everything very literally. We are very transparent, and we do everything by the book. So when we say we don't provide rank, we're like, nope. And we don't know if that's going on to these other places that are, are having these kids come in. We don't know. Not that they're doing anything wrong. I'm not criticizing it. I don't know if they think about things as deliberately as we do. So that if that's where my concern comes up. Is I don't want to put our foot down and say we're not going to do this when we could be hurting kids. Rick had said that this has not been misused in the last five or six years that we've had this in place. Never been misused, never been questioned, never been, well, I want to give it to somebody else, or can I do it? It just hasn't been. So, yeah, like nobody's tried to say, you make an exception for Service Academy, so you need to make an exception right. for me. It's not to say it couldn't happen. I'm just saying that it hasn't happened. Um, and so that's what my concern is. So I, I, this is where I struggle. I, again, I don't want to hurt kids by having class rank, but I don't want to hurt kids by having this exception. And I don't think this exception is going to hurt anybody. I think it still helps our kids. Well, so that's the, way I, that's the way I see it. I, the whole point is to get away from putting kids in an uncomfortable situation. And I feel like this is kind of doing everything for everybody, allowing everyone to have their opportunity. Okay. Liz, did you have something else to say? Yeah, I um, so five years ago when we changed this policy, it was a compromise because we believed that revealing class rank was not a good thing. If we basically, if we adopt this amended language, we are going to not necessarily give a numerical number, but you are basically giving rank to the top 10 and the top 25 percent. Right. Mm -hmm. So the whole thing about not trying to gun for the top 10, top 10 is now you're going to be gunning for the top 10 percent or the top 25 percent because those are important numbers because those you can reveal to the college. And if you go through Naviance, this is the point that I was making today in this committee meeting, if you go through Naviance, most of the high-performing schools are going to say things that are required, things that are recommended, and things that are optional. And class rank is almost always recommended. So these kids really want to, if they want to get into these elite schools, they want to be able to do most of the things in the recommended category and you're going to give certain students the ability, but not all of them. Yeah, I mean, like, what happens if you're in the top 30 percent or like 28 percent? Can, can I can I make a thing? Yeah. And, I, and I, I also think no, that our, I agree with you, Liz, mm -hmm. and I hadn't thought of it that way, yeah. and I agree with you. Thank you. I'm going to vote against it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So so let's we argue so like, we can yeah. take the vote no, on. You're, you're right. No, that, that yeah, it's kind of a slam dunk. So let's um let's take a vote on the amendment since we seem, we, I think we might know where it's going. Um, <laughs> <laughs> is there any? But it was, it is, it was it's a good yeah, attempt, and I understand what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. So at this point, I'd like to take a vote on Tom, on the amendment that's on the floor. Um, all those in favor? A roll roll call. call. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Roll call vote, starting with Liz. Liz, nay. Kristen, nay. Cindy? Nay. Holly, nay. Tom, no. Beth, no. Kate, nay. Okay. Well, okay. Anyway, so now we have things. back on the floor the exception, the the policy IKC class rank, with the exception. Okay. I, I move to uh, remove the exception. So we have a motion on the floor to remove the exception, seconded okay. by Beth. We've had the conversation. Um, I'm trying to think. I'll move out. Okay. 
So uh, all those in favor yeah. of roll, yeah, roll, 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 roll call. call. Okay, sorry. Sorry. Roll call <laughs> vote. <laughs> Remove the Good exception. Day. Holly Nay. Do we miss Cindy? Cindy? Cindy. Yes. Tom yes. Beth, yes. Kate, nay. Okay. So now we need to have a motion on the floor for third. Oh, I'm sorry. Motion failed. Motion, motion failed. failed. Um, it was three, four, three, four. Thank you. Three, four. Now we have the just for third read. We have policy. We'd we like to make this third read and adopt. We'd like to make an amendment to make it third read and adopt and just be done with this. Keeping, keeping the exception, it. keeping it as is. So the Stop only change as written. As written. Well, the, with 2022. As, as proposed in the in the agenda packet. We'd someone like to make a motion to. Other than the he she thing. Right. right. So other than the he she, she thing. So and we, confirming okay. that it's 2022. Confirming it's 2022. Changing his or her to there, and changing um and that's the um and amending the motion to be third read and adopt. That would be the motion to make an amendment for third reading adopt. So moved? So moved, I'm sorry. And second? Second. Okay. So we're first we're gonna we're gonna approve the amendment and then we have to vote on the actual thing, right? Or do we just is it just one vote? In theory you're correct. Okay. So in theory we're gonna do two votes on this. So this is the amendment. We're this is the amendment to make an adopt adoption. Yes. We have a motion on the floor. To adopt it. And yeah. second, Liz okay. I. Liz I. Just aye. Cindy? No. Holly I. No. Tom no. Beth no. Kate I. I. Okay, so that's approved to be adopted. <laughs> We've approved that. We need one more vote on this. So we're back to the back to the original thing that now we've got it read and adopted. So we're just gonna vote one more time, just to make sure we voted again. So the motion is to Adopt the policy. So moved. Seconded. Seconded by Kate. Liz. No. <laughs> okay. Where's the I? We've not even had a discussion. I don't even know why we're calling this a vote. Okay. We don't, we've never had a discussion on the actual motion itself tonight. To, okay, then would you like to have a discussion on the actual motion? Yes, I would. Okay, so can you resend your vote? Absolutely. Okay, so what would you like to discuss at this point? I would like to discuss the fact that the policy currently discusses that we're going to have academic recognition um, in the program of studies. Oh, that's right. And we just passed a program of studies that has no academic recognition. Right. So. The way that that was um, discussed at the last meeting was that uh, it could be added in as something distributed with it. Um, next school year. Because they couldn't know what to put in the program of studies without policy. No, I'm just saying that, yeah. was, that was the proposed solution yeah. so, to that issue. So the, the, the academic achievement thing will be a procedure that would be an amendment to the program of studies. And we always vote on the program of studies. So that amendment will come before the board. And so the next year's senior class will have no ability to have their academic achievement. No, no, it, we, I think the plan, I, t I did talk to Gina about this a little bit, the plan is to try and get it, we can amend the, the program of studies in the next six months. We can amend it in July if we have to. But and you're it, asking us to blindly vote on what this policy means. I would like to see the language in the program of studies and determine if that's adequate and what and a, and a framework that I would like to Okay. That, that it is consistent with all of the discussion rather than just saying, okay, we're going to, whatever we end up adopting will work. May I ask a question, Liz? I agree with you and I want to see it too, but how do you put it in your program of studies when we don't have it in policy yet? That we're taking, like, that this is the way we're going with it, you know? I, I don't understand because right, this, we haven't approved the policy, so how do they. We could have brought it as a joint motion. I mean, they could have been. We talked. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's definitely come up, but it. Or, or there could have at least been a proposal. We have not even have a proposal. Yeah, that, that's true. I mean, we're just. That, that, that's, a, that's an error on communication because there were there was 
a proposal that was part of the um, the top ten committee. Except and I think it's in that. I think it's actually in that report. But the the proposal did not include the actual specific. It didn't ranges. show what the threshold was. It didn't have the threshold, so the threshold has to come back to the steering committee. Right. Mm -hmm. So we don't have the threshold information. And so if the threshold, and if the threshold end up basically doing. What you just said, I, mean, the, it, I think there, I think it's going to create that same sort of issue. It wasn't based on percentage; it was based on raw GPA, so that there was no restriction in how many could achieve a given level. So it's not a percentile. So it's a, it's a GPA. Such and such a range of GPA is one level. This range is another level, and this range is a is potentially a, a third level. But everyone who achieved that whether it's one person or 50 people or 100 people, could all achieve that level. So it, it took out the fight. It was not a um, mutually exclusive um, So ranking. I think the idea was to try and have that to us before next year so students would know. But the, the program, so they'll know that, they'll, that this is being worked on, but it's not, we won't have the actual numbers. And, and part of the problem is that the choice of those rankings or those thresholds is somewhat dependent on the outcome of the weighting committee because the, one of the goals was to make sure that the ranges could be achieved by people who were not in, in any way honors possible. jazz band and honors chorus right. kind of things. So at this point, what we have here is we have to pass a policy to get rid of top 10 and replace it with academic achievement in order to really move forward with the academic achievement work. So there's definitely like a kernel of, you know, issue here. It's with a the chicken and egg thing. It's a chicken and egg thing. Um, but we're trying to get this part done so that we can then move on. Um, I spoke to, I think, Gina at one point and possibly Rick too, and we can amend the program of studies. We did it last year. We did something in the middle of the year that we amended the program of studies. We can do that. Um, but we need the program of studies, the general, like what classes we offer now, because guidance has to start scheduling classes. The pressure was to, achieve, to assist in scheduling. Right. Um, the non-schedule impact items, was, it was felt, could be addressed at a later date. But you're right, you're voting on something with a little bit of blank check in it. And you're also asking kids to pick classes without knowing what the academic achievement protocol is going to be. Or the weighting even. I mean, so suddenly, you know, you had a kid who was thinking they were going to apply to the academy, and they were, you know. Well, we, we are, um, but academic achievement is, like, recognizing that at graduation is not necessarily, I mean, I can see how it would lend itself to some thought process with classes, but we're trying to get away from choosing your classes based on that. So we need to work a little bit with the guidance office to make sure that they are letting kids know that this is really about making your, the best choices for you. Um, and this policy, I mean, if, if you want it simple, we could take the whole sentence out about academic achievement being reported and not have it in policy and just simply have the policy be, we don't rank and the exception for class rank will be made for the service academy. And then take that whole sentence out and go on the process of having the policy committee or having Rick come back with a proposal for academic achievement being recognized at graduation. And then that makes it so that you're not voting on something that you're not sure of, and then we can vote on the other proposal in the future. Yeah, taking it out of the policy doesn't it fails, doing it. We still have that. And if it fails tonight, like if it fails, then we will have rank. We will have the top 10 back. We will have the top 10 policy exist as it as existed. This policy will be back in the policy committee. And I'm not, I don't know if the policy committee is going to bring it back again. Like, I don't know if we'll bring it back again. Like, we do have the control. And I set the agenda. Like, we might not bring it back. I because think removing the concept of academic achievement from this would be a pretty radical change not to have notice in the board agenda. Right. So again, we would have to then take the 
adopt part of the amendment that I just made out and just have this as a third read. Well, and but the only counter to that is that if you take it out, it doesn't preclude you doing it. And since it's as ambiguous as it is right now, it's a motherhood and apple pie statement. It's it's not intended. We to, are just circling around this, so to, we need to, to come to a resolution. Out. I, mean, if you, I don't so think taking it out is a change to the functional policy. We need to get. We need. We need to move on here. What we can do at this point is. You're um, take it out, Tom? I'm saying you. Sorry. I think you can take it out without changing. The function of the of it. Well, I think if, if there, like Holly's saying, if there's enough um, discussion about that, we should just do third reading and. I and think bring we should just we know, should amend the meeting, motion again. Meeting in a couple of weeks. Get rid of a do yeah. third reading, and yeah. we'll bring it back next month, and hopefully we'll have a little bit more fleshed out for the program of studies. I, I really I can't in good conscience pass this at this point, and at this point I'm telling the board that if this class rank policy fails. These changes, this amendment, if it fails, then the, we go revert back to the current policy on this, which is that we have continue to announce top 10. And I'm at the point where, as chair of the policy committee and chair of the board, I'm not bringing this back again. So, like, that's where, I mean, you guys can all mute me and whatever, but. <laughs> we can require that. It you can require it, of course. I have no power. I just wanted to say that. <laughs> Okay, so at this point, I'm going to make a motion that we remove the word adopt from my last motion. And so Dawn knows we have put this on the floor for third reading, not adoption. We will put this, can I have a second on that? Okay. All in favor are removing the word adopt. Roll call vote. Liz. Aye. Cindy. Aye. Holly, aye. Tom, aye. Beth, aye. Kate, aye. Okay. So now we have the third reading on the floor. The policy committee can take it under advisement. We can remove the, the language. We will, um, we have the exception in there. We'll bring it back for fourth reading and adoption next month. Can All I ask a question? Yes. Wait, so we, have, we have a motion on the floor, right? The, right. right. It's just for third read, though, because yeah. we took adopt out. So. Is there a preference to have that second sentence removed or to have to have the second sentence remained with backup information about what it is? That's a really good question. Any comment on that? I, I feel like I have the backup information, right, to understand. We, we, could, so we, know. we, don't have we could come in with a studies. We could, we could literally lay out the academic achievement in the policy. Right, we, we decided. And it has the same impact as right. amending the program of studies at this point. Right, we don't have, have to have it in the program of studies. Process. Okay, so well, we can put it in there. The, the reason that was being proposed this way is the same reason we put other things in, like handbooks and stuff, is to allow it to be um, uh, to be altered easier, more easily, if it's found that it's... They both require a board vote. No. The program of studies requires a board approval, and so does the policy. The only thing that right, doesn't... Right, but it doesn't, it's it doesn't go through the same number of readings and all that stuff. It also. has in the last it 10 has years. Okay. So, I mean, that was the idea, Liz. So my sense from you, Liz, is you'd like it in policy. You'd like the whole thing in policy and not a program of studies, right? At this point, I think that's the easiest way to okay. adopt it because that would require us to do one vote and would allow the program of studies to go to print. Okay. Um, so anyone else who has a, wants to weigh in on where they are if the academic achievement sentence is removed? Is there anyone who's going to not vote for it if the academic achievement is removed? The academic achievement sentence. If the academic achievement sentence is just removed. No, I mean the sentence removed from the policy. Yeah, this is your sentence, yes. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm not voting for okay. it if it's removed. Not so you, tonight. Not tonight, I mean like in the if future. That were the, if that were the, the outcome, she's just trying to get, get guidance for, the, for, policy. for mm -hmm. the policy committee. Do you want it in, do you feel strongly that you want it in with definition, or are you equally satisfied with it just coming out? No, I want it defined. In in the policy? In the policy. Anyone else have a feeling, a take on this? 
I don't feel strongly either way. Okay. But you feel strongly about the exception? I, I am opposed to the exception, yes. Okay. Okay, so um, do we still have to vote? I don't even know where I am anymore. <laughs> um. We are voting on third reading as okay. proposed. Okay. Well, Currently. We, could we take a poll? As, I mean, could we take a non-binding poll as to whether or not... Well, can we vote on the third read? Or do you want to do a non-binding... We can... Okay. Yes, we can... Take a non-binding poll about what? What do you want, Liz? Whether or not folks would vote on it if the exception is not removed. We already had we that We already vote. kind of had already, that I mean, we kind right, of so. so right. if it's not removed... Well, you voted on it with removing, with it, with it in. You approved. Yeah, and that was the, the majority. Right. Barely. So it was barely a majority. So basically it comes down to there's, there's four of us who voted for it as is with the, with the exception in it, but you don't like it with this other piece. So the question is, but that's not really, how about we just prove for third reading, we'll bring it back to policy committee, and we'll come back next month. We'll see how it goes. I hope I have COVID. Nope, I'm going to hope that you will vote yes. That's what I'm going to hope. <laughs> okay. It is really going to depend upon who shows up at the meeting, though, probably. Uh, well, that's all the more reason to take this back to policy and just talk about and see if we can. Uh, but uh, you're right. I mean, I don't know. Out. I don't know. Figure something out. Get more answers on everything. We've got people no. who don't like it because of the class rank exception. Maybe there's something we can do with that. We've got people who don't like it because of the academic achievement thing. Maybe there's something we can do that. We'll bring it back to policy. So can we vote on this for third read as proposed? Kate. Yeah. Roll call. Kate, I. For third read, Beth For I. third read, it's not an adoption. Yep. Beth, I. Tom, I. Holly, I. Cindy. 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 I. Krista, I. Liz, I. Okay. All right. I never thought this was going to be. Okay. So the next policy that's on the table, that has to be brought on the table, is for third read and adopt. Um, I need a motion to accept for third reading and adopt policy EFD wellness as presented. So moved. Moved by Beth. Second. Seconded by Krista. I heard Krista. Um, is there any discussion on this policy? I nope. can't present it very well because Gina, but there have been no changes. So. <laughs> all those in favor. Oh, roll call. Uh, Kate, we'll start with you. Kate, aye. Beth, aye. Tom, aye. Holly, aye. Cindy? Aye. Krista, aye. Liz, aye. Liz, aye. Great. And then we have for third read, for second reading, I believe, public, um, we need to see what action the board will take regarding case, KCD, public donations. So um, we are making the following amendments. In the eighth paragraph, we're ins inserting on their designee following, or their designee following superintendent, and um, we're changing the last sentence to read, a record of all monetary gifts and the use of such gifts will be kept by the superintendent or their designee and reported to the board. So I need a motion to amend policy KCD public donations to the schools as stated and accept as second read, as amended. Someone. Beth and Tom. Beth, motion. Tom, seconded. And just for your information, we brought this back to, um, to policy. We removed all of the changes that we had suggested except for we did change the values to be $1,000 all the way through, except where it says less than 5,000. So we just changed the 500 to 1,000. And then I took out everything that I had changed. Um, and then we put in or their designee, and we changed it to not reported at a specific time, but reported to the board. Um, and these reports can come any time during the year. And, you know, that's kind of why we didn't even put during the school year because they might receive a donation in the middle of the summer and it might just be very present to tell you then, but to keep reporting those to us. So that's for second read. Does anybody have any comments or discussion on that? I'm assuming this has, has administrative support for the dollar values. Yep. Yes. All right. Are we ready to t uh, take a vote? Yes. Uh, Holly, is there a reason that you, we don't want to do and adopt if there's if, if everybody's in agreement with everything that's been changed? 
Um, we can do end adopt. Sounds like a good plan. So let's change the amendment to end adopt. We, or you could just have, we can just have a sec, another motion afterwards. Yeah, let's adopt. do a motion yeah. afterwards. Okay, yeah. great. So all those in favor of second read. Roll call. Uh, roll call. Kate. Kate, aye. Beth, aye. Tom, aye. Holly, aye. Cindy. Cindy. Aye. Krista, aye. Liz, aye. Okay. Now we need a motion to adopt. So moved. Um, policy KCD. Second. Moved by Beth. Seconded by Kate. All right. Liz. Liz, aye. Cindy? Aye. Holly, aye. aye. Tom, aye. Beth, aye. Kate, aye. Great. Terrific. Thank you. Okay. And Thanks, then, Cindy. Thank you, Cindy. Wait, we have one more. Yeah. Um, no, but I'm glad she said that. <laughs> thank you, Cindy. Okay, yeah. so that's done. Great. Take that off the policy committee plate. All right, and then... Article three We need... Yeah, we need a motion to take from the table the Articles of Agreement. Oh, yeah? I, that's what I have in here. Yes, about I mean, it was it was about six months ago. I just put it on the table. Um, yeah. I brought the articles agreement to the board, and what happened is we got to the budget committee, and Tom pointed out that the article that I brought forward was not the official adoption when we went from a um, informal to a formal budget committee, for the lack of better word. Yes. Um, so then I took everything back to Attorney O'Shaughnessy and asked him to go back, and he worked with Don McMillan, and they went through the annual meetings, all the different things that happened, and that's on the last page of the Articles of Adoption. You'll see that in the footnotes, um, you know, it talks about the formation and all the dates there, and then it mentions an article if it has been changed since it's been adopted, and it gives you what happened and when it was adopted and then when it was certified by the state board. Uh, obviously, the one that gets changed the most is Article 5, which is the apportionment formula. So you have the dates of all the different apportionment formulas. Article 7 um, is there and Article 15. Uh, all of those references can found, be found in the annual meetings, and that's been confirmed by Don. Uh, and we, I also want to publicly thank Eric Power, uh, he had attended many of those meetings and brought forth uh, uh, many of the dates and helped us with that. So in your packet, I had distributed uh, a form for you tonight. And then tonight, when I walked in, I provided you a uh, what Jim referred to as a clean copy. And what he did is, under formation, in the one in the board packet, it had the numbers 12 4 1989 and he spelled it out to be December 14th, 1989. So he just basically changed the dates to make it much more formal. Uh, so this is a current copy of the Articles of Agreement for the districts of Hollis and Brookline. Once it's adopted by the board, it will be posted, and then we will do our best to maintain it and keep it current, which is something that got let go going back all the way to 2004. But according to the outline, I have... We had to take it from the table first. Is that Correct. We tabled it. Yes, we tabled it because when Tom discovered that we didn't have the right budget committee uh, in there, that's why we decided to table it and get the correct information. So it took us a little while, but there it is. So can we at least take it from the table before we talk about it? Sure. Okay. So I need a motion to take from the table the articles of agreement. Beth. This is the, so moved by Beth. I need a second. Tom. I don't think we discuss. We can just get some non-discussable motion or something like that. So at this point, we need a roll call vote to take from the table. Kate. Kate, aye. Beth, aye. Tom, aye. Holly, aye. Cindy. Cindy, aye. Krista, aye. Okay. So um, now we need to put a motion on the floor to approve it, and then we can talk about it. Yep. Okay. Can, can I, point of order. Sure. I didn't think we can approve. I know that's what right. I don't understand. What was my question? What, what Jim told me is to bring it to the board and have the board approve that this is the current version. Now, if... <laughs> but so I didn't think we had to do that because all, all the items in here were right. approved by, by the, the legislative leg body. Correct. So it's just a question. It's, it, it's like saying, did you write? did you spell it right? It's not saying... 
-hmm. But if, if Jim wants us to approve it, we can. I just well, it's it's just been such a long time since the process was done and brought to the board because literally the problem I have with that is I have no way of knowing if this is right. right. Exactly. Yeah, no, we've not That's. Had time to yeah. I don't have we any records to, 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 say, too, so. to say that it was no, formed in 89. Oh, that's... yeah, but I mean with the but, And I the specifically clean. asked to have the text of the amendment mm -hmm. from SAU administration twice this week and never got them. Mm -hmm. So like, I have no way to cross-check this. The... I understand we're in the middle of COVID, and I believe probably those administrators were uh, filling lovely spots at the high school. But I don't think that we necessarily have the data that we could attest that this is accurate. Well, they I don't even know what that data would be. It's That's the, the problem. Well, it's the, the minutes. Amendments. If you had the amendments, you could say that. But I mean, you're right. Even we can go back to annual reports, but that's really what we would have to do. That. To well, I, I think we already had legal counsel and our and Dawn go through and and give us. Right. the dates that these things were amended and so I would think that Jim would certify it not I mean, an opinion us. of counsel is my opinion <laughs> so we can so it's we just took the, it off the table that I re well I have a, I have something I want to discuss about it well there's several things about it that, that need to be updated at some point okay so, but we but can't. But we can't update the articles of agreement. They have to be updated to the legislative body. So we need a warrant article to do that. Right, but but so we can we can vote to create a warrant article. Right, I understand that. Yeah. So yeah. I think we could take a mo So yeah. So I think the discussion is. It seems like that we could get an opinion of counsel who could basically certify. I've gone through the records and I believe this is the a true and correct copy of your articles of agreement. We get in, but we can take a motion. We can take a vote on the motion on the table. Mm -hmm. We don't have a motion on the table anymore. We voted on we that. Just moved it. We, we took moved, it. We took we it off the. We it took it, it, off, the off, the table. it off the table. So you can put a motion to approve this, and we're going to probably did not, and that's going to probably fail. And then the, I think then you're going to have to put a different motion on the table. So, what just to make sure I heard it correctly. Council did this, but you want a letter from council saying that this is valid. Yeah, I, mean, I think. No, I'm just, I just, I'm just trying to clarify that so I bring the right thing back. I mean, Jim spent probably yes. multiple days working with Don to arrive at all those footnotes at the end, but now you want a thing basically under his legal opinion saying, "I've done all this work; it's I want correct." Jim to tell me what he did. Okay. This is okay. what I did. This is what I did, and. I believe this to be a true and correct copy of the Articles of Agreement of the co-op. Uh, and, and I can get that. Because, yeah. because he's the only one. None of us can speak to it. No, I, I don't disagree. I, I just, if he that's just, what... He just wants to know what, what he's, yeah, he's okay. asking for your opinion. Yeah. To ask him. So, no, I know that now, so I'll get that from Jim. Yeah. So if you want to leave it sit for uh, until next month... But we're not going to take it... Table. We're not going to, even after <laughs> he certifies it... <laughs> Do we? I don't think we need to approve it. If he certifies it, right. we don't, okay, right. all right. The the, the, the right. legislative body has approved a series, and he's just saying that this is a true and accurate record yep. of what was right. done. Right. That's well, we all. Yep. didn't need to bring it off the table. We didn't need to bring it off the Let's table. Let's slam it back on the table. No, for a different reason. Don't you want to bring up what we want to do now but, and give them a heads but up? So, but that I think I think that becomes now. So now what you're going into is. We have some issues with the articles of agreement that exist and are that could be legally certified, and so we want to come back with a presentation or a proposal to make changes. And I don't think we want to go into that tonight. If we want, it's real simple though. Okay, go ahead, Tom. I I would like to see Article Four removed because we don't do anything in the Farley Building anymore, and we don't own it. It's okay. So that Article 4 is basically void because the Holland School District doesn't own it. Article 13, I don't think he's ever done. And I'm not asking us to take action, but I wanted to start the ball more because we want to create a warrant article for making the changes to the articles of agreement. Uh, articles of agreement. Yeah, Article 14 clearly needs to be updated. Article 2 needs to be updated. So do, 
do Tom and Liz want to form a, a subcommittee of the board to go through the articles of agreement and craft warrant articles for our approval for the warrant for this year? During the pandemic? No. Don't do it, Liz. It'll only take us about 10 minutes. <laughs> well, let me be on a I mean, honestly, at this point, I don't want to spend more time on this tonight. So, and it's not... Well, Here's the other piece, though, and I just throw this out there. After listening to Drew, is this the year to put two articles like that before the legislative body? I'm sorry, You're saying you is it or is, is it? Is yeah, it that's the year I, to put well, two articles before though. the legislative bodies about the articles of agreement in the midst of potentially drive-through voting? So, what's the, what's but that would be a decision we would What's the other one about the articles of agreement? Well, Liz talked about two and thirteen, I think it was. Oh no, this will it'll be a it'll be a single warrant article. article. It's it's these are housekeeping ones. I mean, there, there's, but there's a ton of them. I mean, there yeah, are. What it talks about in the one year to, to, to split the 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 um, teachers' contract payment, there's no reason to have that in the articles of agreement. May I just ask, like, sure. how much prep has to go into this? Because it's not that I don't agree that these need to these changes need to happen, and that they're pretty simple housekeeping things. But I'm curious about the efforts, the time, the timeline. So the, the cost, only way to change the articles of agreement is to have a warrant on the warrant. Right, article, I understand that. Which needs to be written by right. legal counsel and we need to approve the warrant and we need to approve that. So right. it's it's but all housekeeping, time, it's steps, yeah. it's things that can be done. Yeah. But as Andy points out, we're gonna be throwing nine ballots at our at our constituents right. in a drive through vote. So but we would decide as a board whether or not these change a warrant should go on this year's warrant. Right. So but before we even get there, we need somebody, a group, to look at this. And I don't think we want to spend time in a meeting going through the commas and, and the... I, I'm more than happy to do it with Liz, but time is of the essence on at least one of them. Well, that's, yeah. Right. So We would love to do it. So huh? what I would like to do I is we would table love it. To do it. Okay. What I'd like to do is go put it back on the table for tonight, have you guys come back. It's, it's of the essence. It has to be probably for the gym. Well, when we're developing the warrant, which is January. January. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's going to have to be by January yeah. 6th. It's going to be a subcommittee that I'll appoint. I'll tell you why. Okay. And it'll be yeah. a, a, it's a, can I appoint? Can I appoint? Yep. Subcommittee? Mm -hmm. The subcommittee that I'll appoint. It'll Thank be the you. two of you. You'll work it out. Unless there's a third board member who'd like to join in. And um, <laughs> there's three board members that can work on it and come up with a proposal, much like the policy committee. And they might have to consult with um, whoever you need to consult. So that's how I'd like to move forward with it. So that <laughs> does that sound good to everybody else? Um, good. I just right. don't know why it has to be tabled. Okay, so let's not table it. Do we have to vote on anything? Do we no. do anything? Okay, I so we'll we leave it as is. No table. Dawn can let me know if that's not right. Um, and. At this point, do I need a vote of approval on a committee, or can I just do that? No, you can just. Okay, so I'm just doing that. Okay, great. Uh, John will tell you the board has to vote on any co any committees. Remember, um, any appointments. appointments. Okay, so um, she will do that. But the problem is, we haven't noticed that to anybody at home. Okay, so, so I would rather have Dawn appoint? tell me I need mm -hmm. to do that, mm -hmm. but at least have it on a public agenda that we're appointing people to a committee. Right. Can we be something less formal than a than a committee that doesn't a require panel. appointments? A, a working group. <laughs> will apply because I don't want to have me me public meetings and minutes. We're just trying to and come up with something. Um, it should be a committee. It should be a committee. Okay. You're talking the Articles of Agreement, which is basically the Constitution. Then that means we next. can't meet until after our next meeting. We right. Have a special meeting. <sighs> yeah. Well, noon. we have to have a go. meeting. Yeah. That's we, so we can do a five-minute meeting for the sole so purpose of a can I just meeting. say, these yeah. Articles of Agreement have been written like this and have existed like this, and we have not had ownership or involvement of the Farley Building since my kids started in the middle school. So there's nothing, we, we don't have to rush. Like yes, we, we do. Have I a group. Yeah. That's if you want it on the warrant for I'll this talk, year. Yes, yeah. I'll talk to you about it non-public. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I agree with Tom. Yeah. Okay. It's, I think so, like, listen, we'll, it'll we'll, take five minutes I would like, to establish we can, put, we can have meeting. a second item on the, yep. the January 6th Zoom meeting agenda that'll be this committee report, okay? Can you guys oh, get my name more? January 6th, that's, that's not enough time. We're going to have to have a special meeting. You need, we're going to need to notice a special meeting. can be a Zoom yeah, meeting. Just next be, week. You only like, need to get then a, it allows us the time. We still have, a, we still have the 
emergency order in place, right, Andy? We can have a Zoom meeting? Yes. Yep. Okay, okay, so we can have a Zoom meeting. We just need to get a quorum on it, and we're going to vote to appoint a committee. Yeah. Okay. The, the only have to notice it at least five days out. Right. The, the only thing is once you start Zoom meetings, you're going to have the public ask you why aren't you Zooming all your meetings. Well, I, I think the, the point we're is we need to get a committee. Oh, for that too, yeah. For, well, then we show up for five minutes and we go home. Exactly. I mean, why can't we do us. that now? You can, can't you we can do that a, now. Why can't we appoint the committee now? It'll be in the minutes that the committee's reflected, yep. and then the, the committee will go on the agenda mm -hmm. for. So. I thought uh, it was because you can't appoint without approval of the board. We're going to approve it right now. We're going to appoint it right now. And Andy said we can't do it because we haven't noticed it on the well, agenda. We, we typically have worked hard to notice everything, but in the, in the scheme of things, if there's a pressing need for the yeah. articles of agreement, knowing that we have to have things ready for what could be a very unusual annual meeting season, I think I would take that risk and let people read the minutes why. Right. So okay. I need a motion to create or to appoint. I need a motion to appoint. Tom Solon, Liz Brown, and Beth Williams to a subcommittee of the board to review the articles of agreement. So moved. Moved by Cindy, seconded by Krista. Krista, I can't. I can't. You're, Krista, okay. Is there any more discussion on this? All those in a uh, uh, roll call vote, please, Liz. Liz, aye. Krista, aye. Cindy, aye. Holly, aye. Tom, aye. Beth, aye. Kate, aye. Okay, and then we'll... Thank you. So that motion carries, Dawn. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So now we are up to... Uh, HP highlights. HP highlights. If we could be quick, that would be great. We could be super quick just okay. saying thank you. I mean, I, it's amazing being on our campuses, and if you haven't been on our campuses, you should carefully COVID try it. <laughs> but it's just everybody's doing an amazing job. Um, our, our staff, our students, our subs that are showing up, everything. It's, um, I just want to say thank you to everybody for making this work um, to this point because it's been pretty awesome. Thank you, Beth. Is there anyone else? At this point, I haven't really been able to see much. So um, I need a report out from the process observer. Well, in general, the meeting went very swiftly. Um, we had two unanticipated discussions that were not part of the agenda. And even with those extended discussions, we uh, we got through it. The one thing I will say is we are spending in, uh, the majority of our time discussing policies and things and practices and stuff that don't necessarily directly affect the kids. And it would be nice if we can somehow move that needle, but I'm not sure how we do it. Thank you. Um, I need yeah, I this. Say, I think those are all. Yeah. yeah. Hmm? yeah. Some of them do, but uh, if you look at the percentage of th things like the budget stuff, they, the uh, the school board association and many of the guides recommends that the board try to devote the majority of their agenda to things that um, directly involve student outcome, and we talk about a, a fair number of things that are important to running the schools but are not directly related to student outcome. It's it's a tough balancing act. I'm just relaying what I've heard from gu for guidance. Are we just going is it for um, Reputation. Okay. 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 All right. So at this point, reputation is number... Which one is that? Oh, C. Okay. Okay. I need a motion that the board by roll call go into non-public <coughs> session pursuant to RSA 93-A colon 3 part 2C um, to discuss a matter which if discussed in public with public would likely affect adversely the reputation of a person other than a member of the body or agency itself. So moved. Moved by Beth. Seconded by Krista. And I need a roll call vote on that. That would be Liz. Liz. I. Liz I. Cindy I. Holly I. Tom I. Beth I. Kate I. Kate I. So motion carries 7-0, and we are now in non-public at 8.44 p.m.